family member, neighbor, co-worker, homeless person at the 7-Eleven. Doesn't matter, but get the mind of Christ. Pray and, and ask the Holy Spirit to quicken you to who should be my first victim. And I'm, <laughs> and then when you hear from the Holy Ghost, listen and don't doubt. Apparently my wife was sharing one of my tenderer moments this morning when the, we when I made that handshake with Linus Lefebvre and said, I'm going to go to Russia with you <laughs> in, in November of 90. After that, I was, I was a little conflicted that I would be on the front row because she was on the piano and I had to be on the front row. And I'm saying, oh, Lord, you want to tell me about this? You want to help me? You want to give me an answer? You want to say what? And I'm kind of going on and on. And the honest engine folks, people talk about hearing the voice of the God. I heard them say to me, shut up. How can I talk to you? How can I tell you my will for you if you just battle on endlessly? It was a really important day for me because I learned to say, Hi, Pop, how you doing? Got anything for me today? And then I'm quiet. We can't hear the voice of God if we're endlessly rattling on. If you ask the Lord to show you who to minister to, put on some Christian music in the background soft, get yourself in a comfy chair, and listen. Read the scriptures a little bit. Be in the presence of the Spirit and of the Father and listen for an answer. And when you hear the answer in your head, and if, it, you know, if it's something wild and off the wall, okay, maybe that's not God. But maybe it's just wild and not off the wall. Maybe it is God. Going to Russia was pretty wild. And maybe a little off the wall. Listen and don't doubt. Next step, probably the, one of the most important. Write it down. Written plan for ends of the earth. Write it down. Who is this person? Where do they live? What are their quirks? What do you know about them? When do they work? When are they home? When can you meet with them? When can you accidentally bump into them? When can you make a plan to start to build a relationship with them? Now, you can do this by yourself, but Jesus sent the apostles out two by two. And I encourage you, if you fear and doubt are keeping you from doing it, take a friend. Two by two. Someone to pray with you and even could stand in the hallway while you make the, the contact. If you don't want to, you know, overwhelm the person you're trying to reach. But take a friend. And then the next one is take your time. It's not going to happen in five minutes. It's not going to happen in the first visit. I have a little, well, let's see kind of a, a little drama I want to show you. I use this in Russia um, where everybody lives in apartments and so, but it's, you know, you live in a neighborhood. This, this is just one possible scenario, okay? So you want to reach your neighbor and you go over and you know they're home on Tuesdays, they don't work on Tuesdays, 12 o'clock, you go over and knock on the door, knock, knock, knock. Hi. Say hi. hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm baking cookies and I just ran out of sugar. Can I borrow a cup of sugar? Sure. <laughs> and I thank you so much. Now what do you do? Now you go home and you bake cookies. <laughs> and two hours later you come back with cookies and that cup of sugar. And what's going to happen most times? They're going to invite you in. You're going to drink some tea. You're going to eat some cookies. So here's a couple of ground rules. Don't talk about God. Listen. And don't stay more than one hour. Thank them. Go home. Next time you're on the road, in the driveway, in the hallway, wherever, and you see this person, they're going to say, I don't have a microphone. They're going to say hi to you. You're going to, you're going to start a relationship. And you can't hit someone over the head with the Bible and say, you sinner, you need to get saved. Well, you can do it, but it's not going to work. See, we're not called to make new believers. We're called to make disciples. You need to get someone saved in order to have, make them, have them be a believer so they can be a disciple, but it's all based on relationship. 
And so what if you do this now, and six months from now, you've made one relationship and one person got saved? I would say hallelujah. Six months to get one person saved. There are missionaries that served five and ten years in China and Africa a hundred years ago that didn't get anybody, or just one. Japan, extremely tough. You're in Jerusalem. This is your Jerusalem plan. I know most of you didn't write it down. You're fairly ambivalent about this whole Great Commission thing that Jesus has given you. You think it's probably not for you. I don't thank you. I saw a couple, but you know, I saw several many that did not write it down. You are not above this. You are either sent or sent, a sent one or a sender, or both. And really every one of us is given the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile the lost, those who are not in right standing with God, back to the Father by sharing the good news with them. And you really can't share the good news with them most of the time if you don't know them, if you don't have a relationship with them. Yeah, you could meet a stranger on the bus, pray with them, the Holy Ghost falls, and they receive Jesus. It happens. But that's not the majority of how it happens. Put up the uh, worldometers, please, real quick. Being a missionary and a math kind of guy, I'm into statistics because knowledge is king. And so I've showed you this before. It's called worldometers. Can everybody see that, or does it need to be a little bigger? Current population, 7,509,000,000. When I started using this, it was 6,000,000,000. Today is, uh, how many people were born? 192,000 born today, 79,000 died. How many died when we first looked? 66,000 when we brought that up. About 250,000 people a day die. And so, pretty much all of them have gone to heaven, right? What's the percent of Christians in the world? If we're generous, it's around 30, including what we call nominal faiths, Orthodox and Catholic. And they do love the Lord, many of them, but then many of them just are Easter and Christmas guys. You know, but we don't want to judge. We can't judge them. You know, crazy people for Jesus like you and me, about 10%. But let's be generous and say it's 30%. And so there's 79,000. So that means about 52,000 people have died today since 12 o'clock New York time. 52,000 people have gone to hell today, every day, two-thirds of the world. We're two and a half billion Christians, about five billion non-Christians. Folks, I got a, a phrase for you. You're not going to like it, but I'm going to be done and I can have my wife go start the car. <laughs> we have to have a oh, we have to have a key. Right. Dang it. He's the pastor. And the pastor is the shepherd. And you're the sheep. Would you agree with that analogy? Okay. Pastors don't bear lambs. It's not physically possible. The sheep bear the lambs. The Jerusalem plan. The sheep bear the lambs. The congregants take the good news to the lost. It's our job. It's our calling. It's what we're anointed and empowered to do if we would only believe it and step out and do it. Will you do something about it? Will you make a change in your life? Will you go home and pray with a paper and a pencil in your Bible and write down that name that you hear and make a written plan to reach that one person? Amen? I was going to have everybody come up and pray for a new dedication on it, but I'm not feeling that right now. Seriously, folks, this is not a game. You know, this is life and death every day for all of us. And if we're believers, if we're claiming the name of Jesus Christ in a place in heaven, see them red letters? We need to do what the red letters tell us. Be his witnesses. Go. There is enough red letters in the Bible telling us what to do that if we just started, we'd have the rest of our life to fulfill them. So I thank you for giving me your attention on this today. I hope you'll still smile and come back to this church. <laughs> if you're a visitor, is there any visitors? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not till next week. Amen. And usually the pastor will take up an offering for us, and we're going to take up an offering, and my old missions mentor, he taught us that every time he said, you take up the million dollar offering. 
It's a faith thing. You believe. Million dollar offering. One of these days it will happen. Who knows? But actually, we do have a special need. I very rarely ask for a special need, but we're going to, uh, we make pins. quality there those these are die struck and then hand painted with a toothpick and then fired in the oven this is like the highest quality of a pin that you can get we tried the cheaper ones they fall apart it's not worth I mean the difference between 95 cents and a buck and a quarter it's not worth getting the cheap ones those some of those I've given you are from like 2004 2002 so they last they're, they're a quality item and I, I need your help if somebody can you know, help us with 100 or 200 or whatever you can, we would be most appreciative. This offering is not part of our mission support, so and if you'd like a memento of some Russian money that's it's actually worth a bit, if you go to Russia, I'd be glad to give you some. And I'm going to turn it back over to the boss now, and I am two minutes over time. Thank you very much, Roy. Good work. Good insight. Amen. 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 Two things I'd like to ask you to do is, I know some, most of you weren't prepared to do an offering today for them, so t take this as a reminder this week, because you know how it is. got to remember these things. So take one of the envelopes in the back of the chairs, and uh, you'll see on here where it says for... Um, Tie the offering. Offering includes missions, so you just go ahead and take that home with you. And um, uh, the goal is seven hundred and fifty dollars, right? Seven hundred fifty dollars. When do you need to order? Maybe order them in a month. Okay, so uh, by the end of this month, uh, and I'll we'll keep you posted every week. But by the end of this month, we want to raise the seven hundred and fifty dollars to help. Because uh, we already uh, commit each month in our missions giving to them, but, but this needs to be done above that. And so, uh, you know, just take it. If you want to do something today, that's great. You can fill it out and leave it uh, at the end of the service. Um, but if not, take this with you to remind you of what, and then pray over what you can do this month to help them to meet their goal of 750. Also, you've got this to take with you as well. So. Um, it's such a tremendous job they're, that uh, they're doing, and I'm just so thankful to be a part of it over these years. And uh, so this is really quality fruit that you're, you know, these young people's lives that are changing the nation of Russia. Amen. And um, so we're going to pray over this right now. And uh, then I, I felt like the, the message Roy gave us on planning, I, I think a, a place to start would be to pray this week and, and think of one person you feel that, the Lord needs to show you a way to reach. And, and write that person's name down. And we're going to put that in our prayer time uh, and uh, start praying over this. Because a lot of times you may have someone that God's put in your heart, but you just don't know how to reach them. And, and sometimes you need some you know, 
understanding. So if there's someone on your heart, write it down and uh, let's, let's begin there to start this next Sunday. Bring those back. Um, and uh, we may make up a form for that. But right now, just write down the person's name and we'll put in your name. And then we're going to start praying over those every Sunday. And uh, just start believing God to, to bring some results on those, okay? So, yeah, we have to hurry. Yeah. But on the envelope, we just redesigned these. But we put at the top, how can we pray for you? So anytime you have a specific prayer request, you can write it in right, right. too. Yeah, do that for sure. That's part of our prayer time we want and then I just got those. one more thing that just said, God, G-O-D, half of, I mean, what is God, how do you spell it, G-O-D, go, G-O, God says go, go. So I don't know, that was just real. I don't know, what do you do with the D? Anyway, so let, let's pray. <laughs> Ask the Lord to bless it on your giving and direction for your life and for the life of our church and reaching others. Father, we're just indeed thankful for the opportunity to give today towards this mission effort, reaching these young people in Russia. Thank you for providing the $750. We thank you for also giving us an understanding of how we can reach others. Help that to be a priority in our lives, to think of that person each week, to pray for them, and have the opportunity to come forth to make a difference in their life by presenting them with the gospel as we develop the relationship you want us to have with them, preparing the way with patience and faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you did give today, uh, we'll have that. Uh, Dennis, would you just go ahead and pass the offering basket around? If you did give, we'll receive that. If not, take those with you and bring those back next Sunday. Mike, why don't you come and uh, close us with a worship song. And then we want you to stay and have some cake. We're going to be cutting that cake up right now. Somebody would help with that and cutting of the cake. Um, a couple of folks would do that for me. And uh, then that way we can have some time for fellowship. Uh, as we end our service.